in this study, we are going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, and then drop down to verse 12. I am going to be reading from the New Jerusalem Bible. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem with the words, Go and find out about the child. And when you have found him, let me know, so that I may go and do him homage. Verse 12. But they, the wise men, were given a warning in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. Verses 7 and 8 must be balanced by verse 12. Why did the Magi have to be warned about the machinations of Herod? You see, verse 12 is the key to how we read verses 7 and 8. Now, remember, the Magi were outsiders. Yes, they were coming to see the king of the Jews, but how much did they know about Judaism? There has been a lot of speculation over the centuries as to where the Magi came from. Unfortunately, none of this is conclusive. What we can say is that they were from a distance far enough away to not know much, very much, about the political domain of Herod the Great. One of the great questions in terms of the study of scripture is the year in which Jesus was born. Now, we don't know for certain when Jesus was born. What we can do is take a number of facts and work off of those to come up with an approximate date. One of the key things we could start with is that the Gospel of Luke in chapter 3 and verse 1, which gives us the start of the ministry of John the Baptist is occurring in the 15th year of the Emperor Tiberius. To translate that into our calendar, that would be the year 27 or the year 28 of the Common Era. Luke in chapter 3 and verse 23 adds that Jesus was about 30 when he began his ministry. Now, there's a bit more certainty about the year in which Herod the Great died, and that is typically given as the year 4 BCE. So, taking all of these things together, we would say that the birth of Jesus would have come at the end of the rule of Herod the Great, so maybe between 6 and 4 BCE. The Magi, therefore, would have come at the end of the reign of Herod the Great. And that is somewhat important because that point of Herod's rule is starting to really become chaotic. So the story of the Magi and the warning fits very nicely into this period of Herod the Great's rule. Now, the above paragraph was not meant to be an introduction to the arcane world of biblical deity. We know that Herod the Great was very sensitive about his hold on power. Herod did not tolerate any who aspired to usurp his position. In fact, this included his sons, two of whom he had murdered on the suspicions of trying to take his throne. Herod did not get better with age. He got more paranoid. So Matthew's account of the experience of the Magi with the Herod of Herod the Great fits very well with this image of Herod. Matthew's account of the Magi fits with the idea of where, that they came from a fair distance and therefore were unfamiliar with what was going on in the kingdom at this time. When I read the account of the Magi's experience with Herod the Great, I cannot help but see it as an allegory. Now, I'm not saying this 
is the point of the passage, but the way I see it. You see, for the church in every day and age, there are people who come into the church that are new to the church and are new to the faith. And these outsiders are often unaware of the machinations of some in the leadership in the church. It can be comical to talk in talking to people like this because they often, as they are new in the faith, still naive to the reality of what the church can be like. They have not reached the point where they see that some people in the church have an agenda that has nothing to do with faith. I will not say it is our job to open their eyes to the truth, but maybe we need to come alongside them and be ready to be there as they begin to have questions about these people.